anime, slime slushies, and robot toys. Good morning, robot. Yep, we're in Japan for this episode of the VR Culture Show. I'm Jamie, one of your guides through this weird and wonderful tour of VR in the East. I'm Zena, and boy have we got a show for you. Japan is known for its gorgeous scenery, bustling cities, and of course, its love of video games. But its VR scene is a little different to the traditional gaming business. For Japan, VR is all about amazing arcades, with a handful of intriguing companies looking to push the industry forward. On this episode, we'll be showing you how one company is shaking up VR creation and bringing the party to Tokyo's landmarks. We'll also be paying visits to some incredible arcades from massive companies like Capcom and Bandai Namco. We'll be sampling everything from giant robot battles to Resident Evil's return to VR. First up, we're at the Mazaria VR Amusement Center in Ikebukuro, Tokyo. Run by Bandai Namco, the massive park includes video game favorites like Mario Kart, Dragon Quest, and uh, Pac-Man. As well as Japanese staples like Taiko no Tatsujin and the classic mecha anime Armored Trooper the Toms. The site is enormous, with theme booths for each of its games. One of the biggest attractions, quite literally, is Square Enix's Dragon Quest VR experience. In the West, we know Dragon Quest as one of the biggest and best RPG series around. But in Japan, it's a cultural phenomenon. This new VR experience captures a slice of the questing life, letting players choose between four classes like fighters and mages and fitting them with virtual swords and staffs. You're given a massive open area to walk across where you'll battle slimes and other monsters before facing the powerful Zoma, an iconic Dragon Quest villain from the third game. Your gear is pretty heavy, so swinging your sword is pretty tiring but your support classes are able to revive you if you take too much damage. Plus, being inside the vibrant anime-styled world is a real treat. Pac-Man is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year, but who would have guessed the arcade classic would make for a frantic multiplayer VR game? Not us. In this hilarious virtual maze, you need to grab pellets against the clock, whilst also avoiding spooky ghosts. Working together on Oculus Quest makes this an amazing experience to share with friends, and we were tempted to go back and beat our previous score. We were having so much fun that it was hard not to run around like crazy, though that might mean getting stuck in a wall. Armored Trooper for Toms is another classic in Japan, but you might not have heard of it stacked up to major titles like Evangelion and Gundam. In this thrilling mech duel, you sit on a motion chair and skate around arenas, trying to blow up your opponent. The chair violently rattles when you fire your machine gun, giving you a real kick. Unfortunately, my rival actually worked on the game, so I didn't stand much of a chance in combat. Okay, this was the one I've been looking forward to all day. The Taiko drumming games can be found in almost any Japanese arcade, but this unique VR edition plays like a crazier version of Beat Saber. You hold two controllers that house shifting weights to provide the feeling of hitting drums, and it really works. Then you're thrown into a frenzy of beats and smash your way through an overwhelmingly and thoroughly exhausting track list. And might I add, this is the cutest VR game ever? Finally, we boarded these strange scooters for a dinosaur chase game. You have to speed through an island in the dark, avoiding being eaten by a bunch of beasts. While I zoomed through to the finish, Xena got caught in a fence and subsequently got eaten by raptors, as you can see here. After a quick trip to the cafe to chow down on some VR themed treats, we're off to check out some of the cool work a Japanese VR company is doing. Styly is a VR and AR development platform from Tokyo-based Psychic VR Lab. Recently, the company teamed up with the massive new Parco shopping center in the Shibuya district to show some examples of what these technologies can do for hungry Japanese shoppers. 
that. Oh wow, it, is tra- it, it has completely transformed. Yeah. Along with this AR hallway, the Yap also turned the building's escalator shaft into a virtual art exhibit in which the Mirage Solo headset switches between VR and AR on the fly. These were two really cool concepts for how VR and AR can change how we shop and go right alongside other tech savvy features. Meanwhile, past the new Nintendo store and up to one of the building's top floors, Psychic VR was hosting its annual New View Awards, recognising developers using its platform. 25 finalists in the awards, all built within the same styly platform. There's some really interesting VR experiences in the space, like a kind of VR take on Mango, where you walk through an experience, which is really cool. A lot of very obscure, ambiguous pieces. Uh, as you can see behind me, it's being showcased to the public in the Paco building in Shibuya. And later on, we're going to see who won the awards. New View's grand prize winner went to this adorable app in which a father recreated some of his son's drawings in VR and then brought them to life in a spectacular show. Congrats on the win! As we were leaving the Parco building after the awards, we got our first look at Psychic VR Lab's location-based AR. Starting with this Akira mural. The original mural was situated around the new building's construction site for the past few years. This AR version, triggered by a QR code, is part of the Invisible Art in Public project to turn Shibuya into a modern gallery. It exhibits gorgeous art from the original manga. We were then led to the iconic Shibuya Crossing, where around two and a half thousand people can cross at any one time. Psychic Lab VR turned it into an invisible rave, again by scanning a QR code in the area. It was incredible to see location-based AR work on such a large scale, especially with so many people around. You can see more on these location-based VR examples later in the show. Next up on our arcade tour, we visited Sapporo in Japan's chilly Hokkaido prefecture. The city might be very different to Tokyo, but its love for VR is just as strong. We visited another Bandai Namco-run VR zone. This one had yet more anime goodness in store. After buying tickets from this machine, we got straight into it. From anime to modeling kits, Gundam remains one of the biggest robot battling franchises in Japan. I watched on an amusement as Xena was led through a massive virtual showdown between two metal behemoths. At one point, she even gets to sit on one of the robot's hands for protection in the middle of a gruelling sword fight. She was flashed around as the enemy threw heavy sword attacks at her and her Gundam. This was more of an experience for fans of the show than a blood-pumping arcade game, but that didn't stop her from having a great time. <laughs> what do you think of that one? <laughs> that was really good. Meanwhile, the Evangelion experience put me right in the heat of a city-wide battle. While Taken on the Angel was equal parts fun and harrowing, It was the synchronization sequence with my Eva in the LCL pool and the general setting up of the fight scene that really made an impression on me. Back in Tokyo, we're at Psychic VR's Shinjuku offices to see more of its work. Styly is made behind this leafy green staircase, where a bunch of developers are dreaming up what they think might be the future of spatial computing. That includes this incredible AR shopping display, where HoloLens reveals product information on store shelves or plays music from records just by looking at them. Jamie also joined others in a weird and wacky exhibition combining VR and AR. They circled through a bunch of experiences like a trippy music video. <laughs> <laughs> and an amazing experience of VR tourism in which an AR diorama sized tomb was suddenly scaled up to become his entire VR environment. Overall, Styly showed us some promising use cases for the future of AR and VR, but we're probably years away from seeing this kind of thing regularly. The last stop on our VR tour of Japan was a scary treat a visit to Capcom Plaza in Ikebukuro. Beyond the cute plushies and addictive claw machines are two new VR games set in one of the company's most famous franchises, Resident Evil or, in Japan, Biohazard. First, Jamie and I teamed up to take down zombies in Resident Evil Valiant Raid. This multiplayer shooter has you unloading bullets as fast as possible into hordes of zombies, before an unwelcome visit from the terrifying tyrant from Resident Evil 2. We couldn't get shots of us playing, but don't worry, there wasn't much to actually see. It was an entirely static and simple experience. Then I mustered up the courage to play through Resident Evil Walk Through the Fear, which is set in the terrifying world of Resident Evil 7. 
This time I had to trudge through the gloomy confines of a mansion basement, chased by monsters and madmen. Limited ammo and positional audio made for a creepy experience, but I'm proud to say I overcame my fears and emerged victorious. In fact, the biggest scare in the entire game came from a rather embarrassing collision with a wall. You can check out our full impressions on each of the arcade experiences as we launch our Japan Arcade coverage on YouTube and UploadVR.com. And on that note, thanks for joining us for another VR Culture Show. We hope you join us again soon with another action-packed episode. See ya!